part of the people that you redeem, that you stretch forth your hands to save, and part of the people that have accepted. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, this morning, even as we come to celebrate the birth of Jesus, I pray, Father, more and more, you will let the birth of Jesus have meaning in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Let's call him today. Open our eyes, open our ears in the name of Jesus to see him more and more in the name of Jesus. And as many that have not seen, that have not known you, open their eyes, Lord, this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's have our seat. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. You are all welcome. Welcome to this glorious service. Our title, the topic of our message this morning as we celebrate this wonderful Christmas service is Jesus, the royal gift. Jesus, the royal gift. We have seen from the scripture that we have read, it is because of God's love to us that God gave Jesus to the world. And it is not just some set of people. It is to all the world. In the book of Romans, Paul began to encourage the Romans and challenge the Romans that are Jews when they want to put entitlement upon Jesus, that Jesus only belongs to the circumcised. Now he said to them, Jesus came for the circumcised and the uncircumcised. That you, when Abraham, when God said to Abraham that you are a righteous man, that because you believe your faith has turned to righteousness, it was before circumcision. So circumcision that came later cannot override what God has already imputed upon us. And he said that the righteousness is imputed upon everyone, both Jews and non-Jews, both circumcised and not circumcised. It is imputed. It means that it has been credited into our account. Righteousness has been credited to the account of everyone. But you know if your account is credited. You don't need the creditor. The person that credit your account to go to the bank to go and collect the money for you. And that is your part. So everyone that is on the face of the heart, it's my pleasure to tell you that there is something on your account that have been credited. You don't work for it. It is called salvation. It is called life. The gift of life. I've been credited. You are not righteous. Righteousness have been credited into your account. But it is your responsibility to withdraw it. To accept it. And so several people today, their righteousness is still in their account. Untouched. But I'm praying that that righteousness as men that are hearing, listen to my voice today, you will not die before you accept it in the name of Jesus. So, so many people have done, they have, they have gone now and their account is still credited with righteousness. But that will not be your case. And it will not be my case in the name of Jesus. So, Christ died for everyone from the book that we read, Matthew chapter 2, that our lesson we saw that the wise men, they came because Jesus was born. And the message that was given to them is that the one that was born for the whole world. The Bible says in verse 1, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born of the Jews? For we have seen of the star, and have come to worship him. They have seen the star, they have come to worship him. They saw him that was born for the whole world. In fact, the angels told them and said, that, come and see Jesus that is born for the whole world and for the sins of the whole world. And when it comes to verse 11 and verse 21 or that, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The angel came 
I was talking to Jesus, and he said, you she shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. He has come to save all men from their sins. He has come, and that's the gift that God has given to all men. We know this season is very, very special. Nearly everywhere in the world, if I everywhere in the world, we are celebrating Christmas. Some people may not say, oh, they don't want to use the word Christmas, but they are exchanging gifts. And that is part of the thing that is known about the birth of Jesus. It is part of the beauty of this celebration and exchange of gifts. Government give gifts. Some just few days, I went to go and do notarize something, and I got to the white woman that notarized and I said I want to be there. No, it's free. You know, and I used to go and <laughs> notarize there and pay some money. But as I got, got to there, it is free. I said, oh, because of the season. Can you just see? I just look at uh, this is even a small company. So they also do um, they do this uh, Christmas gift or the season seasonal gift. Some employers they even give 13 month uh, salary. Uh, they, these are all that, you know, the package of this season. They give 13 months salary, you know, different, different gifts. Family give gift. This morning, they give me some some gifts. In fact, I put on the gifts. Yes. Yes, I just said, well, you know, that's part of my nomenclature. Give me, I wear it. I don't want somebody to wear it after, I, you know, <laughs> after I've gone and I keep it somewhere. I don't keep it. So this one, you know, they gave me, my children, they gave me, they said, daddy, come and collect your gift. And they gave it to me, and you know, I said, okay, since I've already went to church, I put it on, you know. So this is the season. Everybody give gifts. And the best gift that God has given to all men is Jesus. And that's why it's the royal gift. So if all the gifts you have collected, I know some of us as husband, you give wife gifts, wife, you give your husband, children, you give your father, father, you give children, you know, you are an employer, you give your employees. You are in the government staff service, you know, you give the people in the society, the mayor, they give gifts to the country, to, to, to the citizen of the city, different, different gifts. If all that gifts are the only thing that you received, and you have not received the royal gift, then all those gifts are useless. It is Christ that the reason of the season. That's it place in my on my street before even before Thanksgiving they have decorated their whole house with Christmas lights they have decorated everywhere to the roof every place even before the Thanksgiving just for the for Christmas and you know you may decorate a place like that you may you may decorate everywhere like that without Jesus all that decoration is nothing there are places that, you know, when we do evangelism, when we go around on Sunday, <laughs> you will see cars parked around the place, all over the place. But when you go to that kind of place, that's when the car is parked, it's an indication to me that they don't go to church. Because all the street is parked with, on Sunday morning. But now go to that street, everywhere is shining with Christmas light. Christmas tree, everywhere. And it's possible that that's the description of the house of somebody. You don't go to anywhere, but when Christmas comes, then let's have emblems of Jesus. Let them know that it's Christmas. Now, if all that we have, if that is the only thing we have, then, you know, they are useless. They are good, but because there is no royal gift, it's royal gift of Jesus Christ that endures forever. Yesterday, we learned at the Christmas service, and on Saturday, that of the increase, of his government. There is no end. Of increase of his government, there is no end. You cannot call him former governor, former king, former president. He cannot be the late king. President comes, and president do what? Goes. So when they come, there are presidents that have been president before, they are alive now. But anytime they want to describe them, they put what? Past of former president. Former president. There are people that have become kings. People that are kings. 
they will die on their throne. But anytime you want to describe them, they become late things. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He cannot be dethroned. He cannot be past. He's ever present. Continuous and continually present. It's the same. And that's why you need that gift that can remain. All these gifts that we receive, they will wear off. They will become late. They will become old fashioned. Maybe what you put on today now is the latest fashion and is the gift that you receive. Soon, it will become what? Late fashion. It become former old fashion. It become old fashion. But Jesus is ever present. So we're talking about this royal gift. Who is this royal gift? Who is this royal gift, Jesus, that we're talking about? Who is this royal gift, Jesus? Colossians chapter 1, from verse 15. Who is this royal gift that we're talking about? That we call it Jesus. The Bible says, who is the image of the invisible God? Number one, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. You are saying you don't know God. You want to know God. Jesus is the image of God. There is no other person that has carried that. Any religion that you may belong to or that you may know, or any religion that is handicapping you, does not allow you to see Jesus, allow you to know God, and you are saying, oh, I don't want, I don't really want God. I don't want Jesus. He's an hero. The image, you want to see God, you need to see Jesus. You need to see Jesus. You cannot say you want to be a citizen of this country and say you hate the president. It is not possible. You can never be that kind of, that kind of citizen. They will not admit you. They will not accept you. If a part of the thing that they will... They will use to interview you when you are failing that citizenship form is to say that have you been involved in any terrorism act? Do you belong to any terrorism something? So if you are saying that you want to know God and you don't want Jesus, it's not possible. The image of invisible God that we do not see is Jesus. So if you are looking at with Jesus, that is the image of this invisible God. And that's the first thing I want us to know. Who is this Jesus? Again. Now that image of invisible God, when Jesus, when Jesus met this woman, that scripture that we read in John chapter 4, verse 10, he, he, he met this woman at the well. He said to her, if you know the gift of God, and who is he? Because the woman did not know. Who is he that is talking to you? He didn't know because he's an invisible God. But he didn't know this is the image. That this is the person that you need to see. If you want to see God, this is the person that you need to see. I think I should just stretch this a little bit more to let us understand this image. He said, if you know who he is, if you know, and the first thing that all of us we should know, if you don't have the knowledge of this person, you cannot worship him. You cannot serve him. Many of us are serving God, but we don't know him. Many of God are saying we worship God, but we don't know him. If you know him, some certain and many things you are doing, you will, not be, you will be far away from it. If you have known Jesus, you know him. Jesus said, if you have known. And I want us to know what Jesus said to him and to her. He said, if you knew it. And that shows, maybe the media can help me, I think that should be still first thing. If you knew it, the person that is talking to you, if thou knewest, yeah, if thou knewest the gift of God, you know this royal gift. And you see that word knewest means that you know and you continue to know. It's present knowing and continuing knowing. Because it is a present continuous tense. If thou knowest, 
So it's not that you just know and you stop. There are three of us, level of us here today. Or three categories of people. There are people that know him. They know him. There are people that doesn't know him. Then people that know him and continue to know him. It's only those that know him and continue to know him that will be saved at the end of the day. Those are the ones that really know him. Because it's possible that you know, you know sometimes when you drive and you know that if you run red light at that place because the police are staying by, you will do what? You slow down and drive. And you think that you know red light. The only thing that shows that you know red light is because there are police that will capture you or that will, that will arrest you. But next time the police is not there. You just need to look at the red, look at it. You just drive. You don't know the red light. Because if you know red light, you will, at any point, whether somebody is there or somebody is not there, you will stop. Because red light means stop. And so anytime you pass it and you do not stop, it means you don't know. But sometimes, because there are people that will easily, easily arrest you, capture you, or do something, or there's camera that will capture, you will stay. Now, if you know, you really know Jesus, even though you did not commit fornication yesterday, you will not stay committed today. Even you did not stay yesterday, today, you will do what? You will still not stay. Why? Because you know him. You know him. The book of all John said that the seed of him remains in him. And so he cannot commit sin. Because the seed remains. So, but when the seed has already died, then you are free to do anything. So the first thing Jesus said to the woman, if thou know, if thou knew the person that is talking to you, this invisible, the invisible image of God, if you know, you will have asked him to give you living water. You will just ask him to give you ordinary water. You will ask him to give you living water. So Jesus is the image of invisible God. Then the book of Hebrews show us more. Hebrews chapter 1 and I will try to read it maybe in one or two more versions of the Bible just for us to understand. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to verse 3. Bible said, God who has hundred times and in diverse manner spake in the time past unto the fathers by the prophet. Now if you know any prophet, you know anybody, their time is where? We go back to verse 1. Their time is where? The time of the prophet is where? So if you believe in one prophet, you are religious, there's one prophet. In your life, there's one prophet. The herald of the prophet is where? Is gone. Who are sundry times and in diverse manners. There might be diverse ways. So if you say there is a diverse way, uh, it's not just one road to heaven. All road to heaven, they are where? In the past. Diverse ways to heaven are where? In the past. All those different ways, different methods go, go to heaven. They are in the past. They are in the past. But let's see what is the present thing now. Verse 2. At in this last days, not just last day. These last days, spoken unto us by whom? His son. So this last day, that's why Jesus is a royal gift. He's a gift that is past, present, and in the future. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this is a moment to remind ourselves and to bring ourselves back to order. To let us know that the person that we are serving, we are following is God. He's not dead. He's not past. He's not late. He's present and present continue. Whom he has appointed here of all things. God has appointed him. You cannot nullify, you cannot cancel the appointment. He will be appointed. The end of all things. By whom 
also he had made the world. Now, fastly. This is the fastly. I want you to read for me in different version of media, please. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of God of the majesty on high. Okay, another version now. The sun reflect the glory of God and show what exactly what God is like. You want to know how God is like? Come to Jesus. There is no other person, no other person that can show you exactly how God is like. And if you know how God is like, if you know him, you will live correctly. If you know him, the reason why we do certain things that is not like him is because we don't know exactly what God is like and what God like. Because when you know who God is like, you will do what God likes. You will do what God likes. You will know that God do not like hatred. God do not like unforgiveness. God do not like immorality. A few days ago, the Pope speak and said they should, um, the Catholic should um, bless gay couple. Same sex gay. If you know God, you will know that God loves homosexual people. God loves same lesbian people. God loves heterosexual people. God loves all people. But God hates sin. God hates sins. And the Bible recorded, let us know, any man sleeping with a man, as sinners. Any woman sleeping with a woman, as sinners. Anybody worship pornography, as sinners. Because some of us, some of our pastors telling us, don't worry, pornography is just the sin of the flesh. Masturbation is just the sin of the flesh. It's not the spirit. When you become angry, it's only your flesh that become angry. If Jesus come on the day you become angry, you are not going anywhere. And you don't know when Jesus will come. That's why your anger has to go. It cannot stay. If you know Jesus, that shall, there will be no secret in your life. If you know him, it's exactly you will know what he likes. So Jesus is who show us what God likes and what God dislikes. Somebody was sharing painfully a few days ago and I was listening to him saying for the past um, 25 minus um, 8 that's uh, 17 right? 17 years. A woman divorced him and took away the children and cut him off from every relationship with him. And the person will be going to church. That woman will be going to church. And you say you know God. How will you know God? And you took your children away from their husband. It's okay, you divorce. That's your own issue. Even though God hates divorce. God hates it. But doesn't mean because you divorce, you will not go to heaven. But God hates it. He only, he only make you, you know, to be more on the casualty level. Because when you are doing something that God hates. But now, you say you are a Christian. You are a dickiness. You are a, I don't know the title you have. I don't know the person anyway. I don't know. But I just heard that as the man was lamenting. And I was saying, and because first she has already, men he has already mentioned something that let me believe this person no, at least goes to church. And you are sitting down in the church and you, even though you are not in the house of your husband again, and you cut the children away and you even may be a man too. And you say, you will never see that woman. It's a wicked woman. When you are sleeping with her, was a wicked woman. She had her children with her body and you deny her. And you are saying you are a Christian. Christ. That's how many years, 17 years. Christ. You are carrying Christ in the body and you are carrying hatred. 
then Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, you don't understand. When Jesus comes, when you know him, the first thing he will do is to deliver his people from their sins. He will remove the heart of hatred. Hatred is a spirit that when it hang on you, it will remain. And you are saying you carry Jesus. And you carry that. No, no, it's not the same Jesus we are preaching. It's not Jesus we are celebrating today. It's not Jesus. But today there's a privilege to come unto that Jesus. The Bible says he's the express image. Let me read one more version of that Hebrew then. I can move on from that. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. The sun reflects the glory. I think you gave me this before. Give me one more version. I want to just say, okay, this, this sun perfectly mirrors God. And it's stamped with God's what? Nature. And so it's stamped with God's nature. He perfectly mirrors God. So anything that we cannot see, when you look at the mirror, do you, who do you see? Do you see somebody else? So when you look at the mirror, it's God, Jesus, that you see. So anything that cannot be seen in Jesus cannot be seen in your life. So anything, when you look at the mirror, you don't want people to see. What do you do? You remove it. You remove it. That's the way it's supposed to be. When, there's no one among God that is born a saint. In fact, if God is looking at people that are most sinful people, the, I would, I have the higher degree in sin. I think I should be number one in here. I don't think anybody, I don't know, but I, I was a very, very bad person. And I keep telling, if I did not become born again, I, the kind of way I was living, is either I am a high assassin or a very high top level robbers, wicked, where I'm, who are the people that follow politicians? Um, eh? Thoughts that I will be, is either I'm that kind of person? Or I will be one terrible person in the occult. Uh, so I don't know if any one of you, when I was in primary, I don't even think I've entered primary that time because I was at home, I was playing football. I was playing my ball. Yeah, I've not entered primary. In my days, they enter primary when you are six years old. So I was just playing the ball. And my grandmother's store was by the roadside. And I was playing the ball, and the ball was going to the on the street. You know, those of us that grew up in the village, you understand. And one boy, just like my age, just put the hand to go for me. He helped me. And I took a knee at that age. So you will see the kind of weakness in my heart. For touching my ball, I took a knee and I nailed his head. At that age. Can you see the kind of spirit that it was inside of me? At that age, he was helping me. Inside of me, he said, thank you. Say, ah, thank you that you don't allow the car to hit my ball. Say, why do you touch my ball? Why? And I took a knee. Now, that kind of terrible lifestyle. When I entered the primary school, I did something one day. <laughs> they took me alone. Those of us that you know, you are in school during my own time. You know, they usually have a farm that you go and do farming during the during the break or after the school. <laughs> they took me alone because I did something that was terrible. I don't know, maybe I beat somebody also, or I did, I, I, I misbehaved to the teacher or something. And they took me alone to stay inside the farm from the assembly or the announcement. Okay, this boy is radical, is rascal, is stubborn. And those are the days that your parents, they will support the teachers to punish you to do everything. All these days that uh, <laughs> if you touch the heel of your of a child, the parent will say, who, who born you that you touch the heel of my son? Now they took me into this village, into the farm that I should be using my finger to uproot a tree. So you see that kind of heart. So God has come. If he didn't come, many of us some of us, maybe there will be people that have done something terrible. Maybe if you are even here, you have killed people. Maybe you are here, you have done abortion before. And all those things are following you around. Christ has come to deliver you. But if you continue in that kind of attitude, 
And you said that now. I said, okay, I'm born again now. Yet, nobody can touch my thing. And I carry that kind of wickedness. I have not known Christ. I have not known him. I don't, I don't know. I've not, Matthew chapter 1, 21, I've not even entered into my consciousness. But when Christ comes, all those lifestyles, he will uproot them. We will see when we read some of this version and some of this scripture in Colossians again. He translated us. Because when you see him, the express image, your life will change. You will know what God likes. His nature will be stamped on you. I love that version that we, we just read now. He will stamp the nature. So anywhere you go, they will see that nature, that stamp on you. People who did not see him, as long as you appear, they will see the stamp. It's something that cannot be removed. They will see it in your life. Your life will change. It's no longer possible for you. I've been sleeping together before with anger for years. But now, you cannot even sleep with anger for days. Talk like even hours. You can't sleep with your husband on the same bed. And you are fighting. And you turn your back. Say, okay. Now you know we are fighting. This is your place. You, the only reason why you can do that is because you have not know exactly who he is. If you have exactly know who he is, you will know what he likes. And that lifestyle, even when you turn your back, it is you that you turn your front again. Say, no, no, I know I can't even turn. Because as you turn to the wall, Jesus will face you. Turn back. If you belong to me, turn back. If you are my own, turn back. And that consciousness will not allow you to remain. But if you can remain like that, then that means that consciousness has become dead. It's not alive in you again. It's the image of the invisible God. People do not know him, but they want to see. You know, Jesus has gone now. We are celebrating and we are Christian. That image wants to be stamped upon us. And that's the image that God wants to be stamped on us. And I pray today that image will be more visible to people. In the name of Jesus. While we are there, people will no longer say God is invisible. You know, it is going to be an insult to God when you are in a place and people are saying God is invisible. Because God's stamp is on her, is on me. And God wants them to see how he is like. When God is dealing with people, he wants to see how he, is, he will deal with people. When God wants to do something, want wants people to see through us. And I'm praying that we make him know more and more. In the name of Jesus. Now, what way again is Jesus? I come back to my to the to Colossians chapter one now, verse fifteen b. Say, for he is the firstborn of every creation. Colossians one fifteen, the firstborn of every creation. He is the firstborn. Every creation. Jesus is the firstborn. Jesus is the first one. Mention any creation. So there is no one on this earth that can say the firstborn of every creation. Anything you can mention, God has made Jesus to be the firstborn. So there is, that means there is nothing, there is no situation, there is no creation you want to talk about. And Jesus did not know about it. He is the firstborn of every creation. What again, how do we know who is this Jesus? The firstborn of every creation. And verse 16 says, By him were all things created. This Jesus is who, by whom all things were created. There is nothing that is created without him. By him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on the heart, whether it is visible, whether it is invisible, whether they be thrones. Whether they be dominions, whether they be principalities or powers, all things were created by him. And not just by him alone, for him. And that's why Jesus is able to address every situation. Because by him all things were created and they were created for him. So if there's any situation in your life that's not working for his glory, you have the liberty to say, no, this one you are not working for Jesus. You cannot work in this life. The said it has not created by him in your life. You are a child of God that say, no, this is not created by my God. Get out of this place. By him, this Jesus, everything was created by him. Everything was created for him. And Jesus, Bible said in that same Colossians 1, verse 17, 
He is before all things. He is before all things. By him, all things consist. Jesus is before all things. So, is the, is the one that was before. Every other thing came after him. So, if you mention any prophet, any anyone, any great man, he is after Jesus. And so, Jesus was before all of them. Is the one that God has considered to be the first and to be at the beginning. He is at the beginning of all things. John chapter 1 also let us know that Jesus is at the beginning. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus. You want to know God? You need to know Jesus. You cannot do without him. Verse 2 says, The same was in the beginning with God. The same Jesus, he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So without him, there is nothing that was made. Everything was by Jesus. And number six, who is this Jesus? He is the head. Colossians 1 verse 18. He's the head of everything. He's the head. He's the head of all things. He's the head of the body. He's the head of the church. Is Jesus that you know, is he the head of your life? Is it the head of your home? Is it the head of your family? If you say you know Jesus, that means you are saying you know the head. That means you cannot make a decision without him. Because anyone that has no head cannot make decision. You cannot make decision without your head. That's where the senses are. So anyone without Jesus has no sense. Because he's the head. So if you have no head, there is no sense. He is the head of the body, head of the church. And if you know the, the head of the church, there are some people that will be listening to my message or listening later on, or some people that are listening right now, but will not be a member of this place, and maybe the head of their church or somebody have said, oh, you can do things, you can do this. Can you just compare it together with what Jesus is saying, what Jesus approved? They say, oh, our pastor approve it. Was he approved by the head? Was he approved by the head? You know, there are people that do things that were not approved by the head. People like Absalom. His father did not approve things. He just go on the wayside and begin to corner people. Begin to accept gifts. Begin to continue to give them gifts. Continue to cut justice. And there are pastors, there are leaders like that that continue to manifest themselves, but they are not manifest the Father. They did not manifest the head. So if you are just saying, oh, this our head have said it, the, our G.O. have said it, our superintendent have said this, is that what Jesus said? Does Jesus say you should be sleeping with women that are not your wives? I was sharing with somebody a few days few months ago that we want to go on mission and was sharing some testimony of some places we went to do missions work and um, when we finished early in the morning this we left the place late in the night early in the morning this pastor just sent a message I said please I want you to come every month ah, come every month <laughs> I want to be coming every month I'll be coming and do this meeting ah, even this one one that I come now next time we come we may likely not come into that place because I'm not I'm not from this place. He said, No, do you know why I want you to come? When you come every month, our geo, I don't want this man to die. I want him to at least he will he didn't attend that message. But I want him to attend when you come every month. He I will persuade that he will come once because of the kind of atrocity he was doing. Because of many women. And he said, Geo. But thank God for that brother. I didn't want to leave the place. He said that the Geo. And I prayed. We prayed for him. <laughs> Even though we just come once, Jesus is there all the time. 
God will save the man. See his heart. And he approved the same for everybody. He said, well, this woman, women are always, they are, they are like beasts. When they, are, they bring their beasts, like, just change them like garment, get another woman. And he was doing the same thing. And some people also are following the same thing in the church. Jesus is the head. What God, what Jesus do not approve, cannot be approved. Is he the head of your home? Is he the head of your life? The head means that before you make a decision, you are taking it to the head and say, this is what I want to do. Do you approve it? And this is what we are praying that Jesus will become in our lives. That as we move from this place, it will be who? The head. The one that we approve. The one that we sanction. The one that we give you order. The one that we give you signs to all things that you are doing. And finally, on who Jesus is, that verse 19 says, is the embodiment of the fullness of God. Verse 19. He said, it pleases God. He pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Fullness. You want the fullness of God. It pleased God. He pleased God in John in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. He said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. In whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And when he comes to that, that same Matthew chapter 17, in verse 5, he thought to the disciples, In whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. This is the person you should hear. If you are hearing somebody else, your hope of eternity may be lost. He said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Do what? Hear ye him. So he's the one to hear. You want to marry? Hear him. Don't marry without hearing him. You want to get a new job? Hear him. Don't enter without getting, without hearing from him. You want to take a decision, hear him. Your pastor may be a good counselor, but hear God. Don't just hear your pastor. The only reason you need to get out and move away from your pastor from any church is when that pastor is not speaking about Jesus. He's not talking what he's hearing. You don't need any consultation. In fact, you staying in that place, you're already at that higher level. Anytime you stay behind somebody that is not following Jesus. Jesus is the only one to hear. Jesus. He said, hear him. So, and that is our attitude as we celebrate and we go into the new year. You come to church. Who are you coming to hear? Jesus. I know several of us to come to hear the man. If he said our father, that the boy is coming to this place today. Many of us will love to hear that the boy you will come to church. Some people that are watching online now, they may likely come. Say, ah, that the boy is coming. You are only hearing man. You are not hearing God. And if you come like that, people know that the boy carry God. Carry God's presence. And a man that all of us, we, we, we really, really value and we reference. But with all that, you may not hear God because your heart it's different. So when you come into a place, come to want to hear Jesus. That will be what will quicken you. That will be what will quicken you. You know, if your heart is still coming to hear a man, you have not known him. Because he's the reason for the season. He's the reason for our gathering. If there will be a crusade, you are going to the crusade to hear who? Jesus. There will be a prayer meeting. You are going to the prayer meeting to hear Jesus. You are going to Bible study to hear Jesus. Let our attitude be to hear Jesus. He's the one that has been appointed. Appointed by God. Appointed. And is the heir of all things. Is the beginner. And is the beginning. And is the first. The book of Revelation let us know. He was introducing himself. Revelation chapter 1, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, I am the head. You know, 
He is all in all. So hear him. Do not leave this place, continue to hear men. And you know, one of the reasons why so many people are not coming to be involved in short, to be active, is because they are not coming to hear him. But for us as we gather, let it be from today, you are coming to hear him. And the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. And the second part of this message that I'm going to share to round up is why this royal gift, Jesus. The first is who? This is why. That same book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. Why this royal gift? Why? Is it important? Why do we need to have this royal gift? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Number one, through him, we have redemption. Why? Because through him, there's redemption. Redemption means that you brought back something that has been lost, come back, redeemed back. Redemption means that you bring it back to shape. You restore it. You give it factory settings. You know, when our phone, your phone, you have been using the phone and it's having issues or you want to dispose it, what do you do? You bring it back to factory setting. Jesus is the one that brings us back to factory setting, the way God made us. He reset our life to back to order. Those of us that have been doing wrong things, evil things, in fact, let me read a portion of the Bible to let us see those parts of the thing. That's in Colossians chapter 1. We read that in verse 14. I think we should just jump to verse 20. Maybe we can just jump to verse 20. Let's see. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things through himself, by him, I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. Go to verse 21. There's a word I'm looking for. Okay, yes, I say verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Let's read that in another version. It didn't say they. You, you, at one time you were separated from God. You were his enemies in your mind. And the evil thing you did were against God. That is us before. That is the kind of life. When I described the little thing I was doing, just part of it, very, very young person, that little thing, very devilish art, wicked art. I, I don't know. I, I just I, I can't I just think devil just I don't know what I did. Devil just entered into my life that time. Just said this boy. But thank God that God redeemed me. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Thank God the devil maybe just because I look, I didn't see anybody, I didn't copy from anybody. Not that I see somebody that was doing it. So I would have said that maybe somebody trained me. Maybe somebody said, Oh, let me do this, do this. No, all, all of all of them around me. Some of them were bad too, but they are they are too gentle. So even at that age, and I was not having not big stature, very young, and very small, you know. I didn't copy from anywhere. But now I'm just thinking that devil must have met me one day. <laughs> I enter and say, This boy, I will finish you. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God. Jesus met me and I said, Devil! I finish you today. So I will finish you. I finish you. So you finish devil out of my life. God will finish devil out of your life. In the name of Jesus. All those are that you are robbing people. People cannot trust you. As now we're in the morning, when you give somebody and say, good morning, how are you? Say, excuse me, let me share first. When you tell somebody and say, can I buy this for you? It costs $20. They say, uh, I know. They already know that that thing it doesn't cost more than five dollars. The only reason why they allow you to do it is because they don't have choice. So you are collecting money by, by force and it's false. It's because they don't allow you, because they don't have any other alternative. There's no other person. You have seen that, then at least they will come back. Uh, that's not the heart of Jesus. God will finish that in your heart. That heart of shitting. You know, God will finish it. When you become angry like this, nobody can beg you. They have been begging you now for the past 15 years. 
let the bath of Jesus today. Let it take away that that anger. That he said, please come back. Uh, please forgive. Uh, please come back. Please, I love you back. Please. Maybe it's your husband that has been begging you. Has been begging you. Even as a Christian. I think we ran one of our Bible study during the December. One of the things we learned when this message was one of our parents that you don't need um, apology to forgive. That should be our life normally. But let's say they have done something terrible, terrible. Something that have not been is very terrible by the standard of men. I agree. There are some things that are terrible. But yet you are a Christian. And now they have been begging you for the past one year. If you are God, this world will not remain two hours before you tell you they saw everything. If you are, can carry that for one year, this world may not remain one one hour before everything that everybody is doing. You say, ah, can they do this? Can they do this? We just, you know, we just, I don't know whatever they, we have, we just crush everything. But Christ, in that mind, he redeem us. Through him, we have redemption. Through Christ, he reformat us. All those bad, evil mind, he formatted it. Formatted, make it new. And when you format it, make it like it never, all those things never what? Exist. And so maybe today you're having some guilty conscience. You have done something that is bad. And you have given your life to Jesus. Or you give your life to Jesus today. Know that when Christ forgives you, redeem you, all the sins of the past have been formatted. No record of them again. You have become new. And that Colossians chapter 1 verse says, from whom we receive forgiveness of sin. It is through Christ that we receive forgiveness of sin. And I want you to know when sin comes into a life, sin comes to stay. Sin comes to stay. It will stay in you. It will bring death into your life. Sin doesn't go away. The only thing that makes sin go away is the blood of Jesus. So if you have been carrying sin, sin will come to stay. He will come with his good. So anytime you want to do something, sin will say, I'm yellow. Maybe you stole something. Now you are trying to correct your children. Say, please do not stay. Uh, sin will say, uh, you say, you should not stay. You forget. Even the necklace that you wear was stolen. Do you remember this thing you did that time was stolen? That conscience will be there. That is sin. That's the conscience. That's the guilt of sin. You may have committed it. It will have been 50 years, 20 years. It will not go. It will continue to remain in the heart. Change your name cannot change sin. Cannot change your status as a sinner. When sin comes, he comes to stay. He comes to stay. He comes to, come to bring death into your name. He come to infect you. Sin is an infection. It's an infection. And it can come with any kind of infection. And you know when devil wants to come, he will come with the dead devil, dead death one, the one that they have not found. You cannot find solution. If you are looking at the standard of men now, you look at those kind of deadly disease, it will just come. Sin come with infection. It come to inflict you. It come to contaminate you. Sin come to poison you. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 said, For the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is Christ Jesus. Uh, is that Romans 6, 23? Oh, yes. Oh, I, I think I put it right. That's Romans chapter 3, verse 23 now, that the sin caught all men have sinned, and they were caught short of the glory of God. That's what sin does. So if there's a sin in your life, there are sins that have not been conf con con uh, confessed, there are sins that you are hiding and you have not accepted this free gift. Free gift that Romans 6, 23, let us see. Jesus, but the gift of God is eternal life. That is Jesus. You have not accepted it. Sin will continue to inflict you. He continues to affect you. It will continue to afflict you. It will continue to poison you. It will continue to contaminate your life. And sin will come to bring no into your life. Bring nothing into your life. Sin wreck men. The wreck men of God's glory. The wreck men of God's nation. He bring nothing. He told you to become nothing. You may think you have something now because you have good name, you have great name. No, all those things, sin will bring it to nothing. Sin will bring it to nothing. 
It is through Christ that we have forgiveness from sin. It is through Christ that we have forgiveness from sin. I share seven things about what Jesus is. I want to share seven things here, but I've only shared two. Let me share one more, then we can, we can close and we can pray. But let me mention the seven sin, the seven number one in Colossians chapter one, verse two, sin. Christ bring peace. Why Jesus? Or why this gift? This gift bring peace. It bring peace. In verse twenty one, he said that he reconciled us unto God. And in verse twenty two, he said he presented us holy. Why do you need this gift? This gift is a gift that presents us holy before God. You cannot have holiness by yourself. You cannot have holiness on your own. You cannot live holy. It's this gift that presents us holy unto him. And verse 27 said that in him we have hope. Christ in us is the hope of glory. And that's actually the name of this church. It is in Christ by him that, you know, we have hope. And lastly, Christ is our message. Verse 128, Colossians 128. He said, him we preach. Any message that does not bring Christ, it will bring Christ to you. Any message that does not bring Christ, it will bring crisis into your life. It will introduce crisis. Any message that does not center on Jesus, it will bring crisis into your situation, crisis into your home. The only way to have peace, like I mentioned in that number three, the only way to have peace is to have Jesus. Peace in your home, in your business, bring Jesus. The reason why there are not peace is because you are not living your life, living your home, you are not living your business, you are not living your career, you are not patterning it after Christ. That's why there is so much crisis. When you have Christ, there will be peace. There will be peace. Let me read that Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Then I will read one more scripture to round up. Colossians 1, 20, just to talk about that peace. And one more to close for us as we celebrate this Christmas. I said, whom we preach. No, verse 20. Yes, thank you. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. Having made peace through the cross. Through the blood of his cross. That is why we need this royal gift gift that people give to us, you know, or that you have received, or that you will still receive, we only bring joy. We only just let you remember this season. But this royal gift is to bring peace into your home. Bring peace into your life. Rejecting this gift is rejecting peace. Rejecting this gift is rejecting peace. And like I told us, when Jesus said to that woman, if you have knowest, I told you that there are three categories of people, people that knew God, or people that doesn't know God, first category. The people that know God, second category. And the people that know God and continue to know God, third category. It is only those third category that we finish well, and we finish to the end. And that is what the Romans, um, this Colossians chapter, chapter 1 let us know towards the end. As I round up, that Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. If you continue in the faith, if you continue, all these things you have heard, if you continue in the faith, grounded and set you, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, and which was preached to every creation which is under heaven, that is the only way you can last to the end. Bible said in that Matthew chapter 1, the wise men, they had, they, they saw the star that he was born, and the wise men seek him. The kind of people that seek Jesus are wise people. For you to be wise today, you need to be among people that followed him. Wise men only follow him. Wise men are the people that seek him. Matthew chapter 7, Tell us, he told us to know who are the wise people, the people that had this word, and they drew it. They built their, their, their life upon the rock from verse 24. 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Wise men, they seek. Therefore, whoso heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken them unto who? Wise men. Those are the people that are seeking. They don't mind that it's far away. They left all that they are doing. They don't postpone it. They don't say, okay, well, it is in the night. Oh, it is still in the day now. We will wait until at least we, they will do the name in, next, in, in 10 days or in 8 days. They don't postpone. Wise men don't postpone action. Wise men don't postpone repentance. Wise men take action of repentance. They follow Jesus immediately. They look at their life and they see it in the mirror of Christ. And they see anything that is wrong. Wise men don't delay. They remove all that is wrong. They remove all the stain from their life. Jesus. Let's rise up as we just pray and as we're able to talk to him. Wise men, be among the wise men today that we seek him. Wise men that we build their life upon the rock, upon Jesus, that is the rock. Accept this royal gift today. Maybe you have been neglecting this gift or you have put it aside. You have not valued it. Maybe some of us have collected, we have received it and we have hidden it. Today, receive it back. Today, remove all the cover. Today, open your heart again and say, Lord, come. Because it's knocking at the door. Please pray for yourself. And if you are here today, you know you have not given your life to Jesus. Or you know you have not been living according to the standard. You know you have not been living according to what you see. Your life is not like him. It's opportunity to come back and say, Lord, I am here. I am here, Lord. I am here for you. I am here to follow you. I am here, Lord. I am here, Lord. Lord, today help me. In the name of Jesus. I do not want to just go along on this journey by myself. I want to accept you. I want to follow you. I want to be among the wise men. Lord, help me. Let's all of us just pray for ourselves. Let's pray, pray for yourself. That Lord will help you. That Lord will help you to know him more. And your knowledge about him will not just be a past knowledge. Your knowledge will not just be a present knowledge. Your knowledge will be present and continuous. You will follow on in the name of Jesus. Pray for that grace to follow to the end. Today we celebrate the birth. We are waiting by God's grace for another one next year. But if Jesus tarries, you know that you will go with him. There is no more shame. There is no more shame in your life. Have you been translated from the kingdom of darkness? Are you still in the dark world? In the dark world of sin? We are sin come to stay you. We are sin come to stay you. We are sin have stained your life. We are sin have soiled your life. We are sin have inflicted you. He inflicted you with all manner of afflictions. We are sin have already be, 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 bring nothing to your life. Bring nothing to your career. Bring nothing out of your marriage. Because you want to do it by your own wisdom. You want to do it by your own knowledge. Will you surrender and say, Lord, today, format my life. All those evil that have been located and have resident in me. All the things that I'm doing behind that my people did not know. My family did not know. My mother did not know. My father did not know. My wife did not know. My husband did not know. All those, Lord, I confess them. I bring them out today. Lord, cleanse me. Purify me. Redeem me. You know you have been going far. You are in that occult world. You are in that, in that friendship. Ask God, bring me back, redeem me. Let my soul not perish. Let my soul not perish in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for yourself. God, help me to move on in the name of Jesus to continue. To continue building on the rock. The Jesus of the rock. Help me, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. As we close the service today, is there anybody here and among us that would like to give his life to Jesus? Or you would like to rededicate yourself to him and say, Lord, here am I. If you are dead today, just raise your hand above your head and so I can see you and I can pray for you. If there's anybody in this place today, whether you give your life to Christ or you rededicate your, you rededicate yourself to him and say, God, I know I've been far away. Lord, I'm here. And if you are here today, you want God to deliver you from any form of any disability that have already handicapped you, that not allow you to perform as a Christian. Just raise your hand as I just pray for you. 
thank you Lord Jesus and anyone that is there that you are really giving your life to Jesus today I want you to be serious about it and pray for yourself pray for yourself pray that God will help you because I want you to know that Jesus you cannot do without him even if you refuse here in your heart and say no 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 you will meet him as a judge he will be there as a judge now he is here to atone for our sin and that's why you should be happy that you have this advocate that he has come he has paid the death penalty and he has redeemed us with his blood may the lord bless you even as you raise your hand and put that hand on those only those ones that you know you are giving your life to Christ. put those hands on your chest if you are just praying that god deliver me from this maybe it is some kind of hatred in your heart and you say god deliver me from me you can lift your hands i'm going to pray for you or those of you that you know you are also rededicating your life to christ you can also place your hand on your chest i will also pray for you but those of you that you know that you want to continue to walk worthy you know you have not been you know yourself you have not been walking worthy you know you have not been walking correctly and you want to come back and say god i want to walk correctly now raise your hand as i just pray or any manner of thing that you know that you just need god help today you just need god's help in terms of your work in a relationship with him. Lord, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We bless you for this privilege, for this opportunity. Thank you, Father, that we can come to you as sons, as daughters. Lord, I pray for as many that may be giving their life to you, that may be rededicating, rededicating themselves to you today. Lord, you will touch them. Lord, you will cleanse them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, all names that have been, that, that, all, the name of everyone today are rededicating themselves or giving their life to repenting from their sin. Let their name be written in the book of life and let no power remove it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for as men that will have been gone back and they felt they need to move forward. They need to step forward. And I pray for as men that they have been holding people in their heart. They have been journeying together with with a lot of luggages, baggages, Lord, and they are ready to drop it. Lord, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, separate them today from any manner of evil in the name of Jesus. Separate them from every heart, Lord, Father, hiding heart, every heart of unforgiveness in the name of Jesus. Lord, Christ has come even to bring, to, to, to bring peace. Lord, I pray today, every relationship that has become chaos, Lord, I become trouble. Let there be peace afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be peace afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, Christ's birth has come to reunite. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, relationship, family that have been set apart, let today be a day of reunion. Let today be a day of reunion. Let unite them back together in the name of Jesus. Unite sons back to the father. Unite father back to the daughter. Unite wife back to the husband. Unite husband back to wives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I give you praise in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, anyone that be afflicted with any manner of sickness and disease, because Christ's birth has come, has taken away all this. Lord, I put a hand to that affliction of sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, let there be wholeness in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let there be wholeness in our relationship with you. In the name of Jesus. I pray for those that are giving their life again. Give them strength to follow you. To follow you to the end. And all of us grace to follow to the end. In the name of Jesus. Let us hold on to the end. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' name mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Nicholas. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We have a special Thanksgiving in our midst this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
brother is having Thanksgiving for his fifth yet. But before then, let's just stretch forth our hands unto our daddy while they go to the back and then begin to pray that the Lord will replenish him, that he will not miss that his heavenly mansion in Jesus' name. Lord, we decree, Lord, that Lord will replenish him every virtue that has gone out, that he will not miss out on his heavenly mansion. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. So it's time for Thanksgiving right now. We want to give God all the glory for our, for our daddy that is sharing birthday with Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we should rejoice with that, those that are rejoicing. Amen. Praise the Lord of my soul. This is the day he has made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul.
at a 50 logos on you. Yeah. All right. You are welcome back. <laughs> and we appreciate all the friends, family that come to rejoice with for our obey today. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Um, all of you that you know, All of all that you know, you are 50 years and above, you will not die before your time in Jesus' name. God will keep you to fulfill your days. And those that are not up to 50, you also celebrate 50. I will celebrate more in the name of Jesus. So, Brian, will be let's hear your testimony. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for coming late. <laughs> uh, but I thank God for everything. I just want to return all the glory and honor to the Almighty God uh, for His faithfulness and His grace upon my family. Uh, it has been awesome God, and He's a mighty God also, because uh, we pass through challenges, and the mighty God see us through. So today, uh, we are not taking anything for granted. I just want to return all the glory to him, and uh, I want to seize this opportunity to thank uh, Pastor uh, Afolabi and the wife for their kind gesture and hospitality uh, when my family came to this America. Uh, I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Sister Oge, we're happy to see you back. Today is your husband, go to Jubilee. Would you like to say something? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Once again, congratulations. So let us pray. Please, church, please, let's join me to pray for him and pray for the family. Father, we thank you. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we bless you. Thank you for preserving your son. Can you, you can kneel down while we pray. Lord, we thank you for preserving your son. Thank you for preserving him. 50 years is not just 50 hours. It's not just 50 weeks. It's not 50 months. It is 50 whole years. Several people that were born in his time, some, some of his friends, could not even see them. Some people all over the world are born that same day. Some could not survive five hours. But you have survived five hours. You have survived five days. You survived five months. You survived five, five years. You survived 50. Ah, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We magnify your name. Lord, together we join Brahobi today to say thank you. We join his family to say thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive our thanks. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, I commit him to your hand that as he begin this new season of his life, this season will not sink you. It will not sink you. You will not be drowned. You will not be lost. In the name of Jesus, your glory shall not be lost. Your family shall not be lost. In the name of Jesus. As we begin this new season, this is a season of joy for you. Your joy over your 